So there's a lot happening in the gospel, a lot. But I'm going to get off the gospel for a second and go back to Jeremiah and uh, try to catch them together. Jeremiah, Jeremiah, what did the people say about Jeremiah? They said, we don't like him. <laughs> they said, come, let us contrive a plot against him. We won't lose anything. Instruction from the priest, counsel of the wise, or the prophet, but we don't like him. We don't like what he's saying. So let us destroy him by his own tongue. Let us carefully note his every word. And so they have his plot. And ultimately, Jeremiah is going to be thrown into a cistern to die. Now, they're going to take him out later. It's a long, long story about Jeremiah, okay? But Jeremiah is one of the prophets. He's one of the major prophets. Who are the major prophets? Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Daniel, and then we have the minor prophets. So Jeremiah is huge, okay? He's a big, thick book of the Old Testament. But they did not want to hear what he had to say. When Jesus appears on the scene and says, who do people say that I am? What was one of the names they threw out? Jeremiah. Or one of the prophets. Now, Jeremiah says this. Remember, I stood before you to speak on their behalf. To turn your wrath away from them. And what are they going to do to Jeremiah? What's their thanks to Jeremiah for that? They want to kill him. Now, Jesus comes and he is, if you will, taking up the mantle of Jeremiah and John the Baptist. And throughout the Old Testament, in Jeremiah himself, Jeremiah prophesied the, the, the cup of wrath that God will pour out on the world. The cup of God's punishment will be poured out on the world. But Jeremiah is pleading for God's mercy for the world and calling people to repentance. And Jesus comes. And you'll hear me say this if you're paying attention during the consecration. The chalice will be what? Poured out. The chalice of God's mercy. Now, there's a chalice of wrath, too. Don't get me wrong. But Jesus wants to give the chalice of mercy. Jeremiah was trying to have the people experience the chalice of mercy. Now we have the sons of Zebedee, right? With their mom, good old Bob. Take care of my boys, Jesus. I want them to be number one and number two. However you can do that. And they're right there. They want it too. And Jesus does not admonish them for wanting a great place. Does he? He just says, do you know what you're asking for? Because if you want a great place in my kingdom, you're going to have to, if you will, take the cup of wrath on behalf of the people. You're going to have to preach a message they may or may not want to hear. Can you do that? Can you? And so I'm going to ask you, can you? It's 
stand up for Christ in a world that might not want to hear a really a, a, a beautiful message like marriage is sacred and your body is sacred and life is sacred. God is a good creator. God is a good father. It's a beautiful message, isn't it? So, J so these two, James and John, they ask, and Jesus says to them in their intimacy with Jesus, you know, you're going to drink the chalice. But I can't tell you that you're going to get the first and second place. You don't really need to worry about that. I want to close my words with uh, some of you that go to confession regularly and you listen very carefully. You'd have to listen very carefully. The words of absolution have had a little tweak. Okay, remember, everything in the church is written in Latin first and then is translated into English. Well, the English translation, as you know, isn't always perfect. Well, recently, they tweaked the words of absolution. And so it was, God, the Father of mercies, through the death and resurrection of his Son, has reconciled the world to himself and sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins. And now, a little more accurate translation, making it consistent with the words of consecration. Now the Holy Spirit is poured out upon the world for the forgiveness of sins. So if you hear that, as you say, Father said something different in confession today. So just a little tweak of how the Holy Spirit is sent among us. It is sent among us for the forgiveness of sins, but it's poured out on the world like that chalice of Christ's blood that James and John said they were gonna drink. And so we had the cup of wrath and we have the cup of mercy. And so we're praying for that cup of mercy to be, to be wash us over. And, uh, and that we pray that there would be many men called to, uh, to, in the prophetic line of Jeremiah to speak the truth as priests, as deacons, as religious, and many women to, uh, to, to uh, represent um, their intimacy with Christ with a boldness concerning his message.